As of this moment, Republicans have still been unable to select a Speaker of the House. We are now beyond uh, two weeks without a Speaker of the House. And the Trump endorsed Jim Jordan, an extremist by any stretch of the imagination, has lost by even more in the second speaker vote, once again calling into question the power of the Trump endorsement, raising questions about how long this is going to go on. Are Republicans going to be able to do anything? to get themselves a Speaker of the House. So let's go over the numbers. ABC News reporting Jim Jordan loses more votes in the second round of voting for House Speaker. More Republicans voiced opposition to Jordan. The Messenger reporting Jim Jordan rejected as House Speaker for the second time in 24 hours. Jordan is hemorrhaging support, raising questions about whether he can remain in the speaker's race. Now, as of this moment, when we are recording today, the timing of these votes is not ideal for the timing of our show. I, I, I can't really control that. I would love to make a phone call and say, sirs, please hold the votes at a time more convenient to our show schedule. I can't do that. Once again, by the time this segment comes out, there may have already been another vote. We may already know is Jim Jordan even still in the running or is this it? But as far as the reporting we have from this morning, Jim Jordan failed to be elected speaker Wednesday for the second straight day, losing votes from Republicans who supported him the day before. It appears exceedingly unlikely he can get the 217 votes he needs to be speaker. Jordan vowed to keep fighting, told reporters he plans to keep talking to holdouts and working on upping the vote count. We don't know when we're going to have the next vote, but we want to continue our conversations with our colleagues. Jordan got 199 votes on the floor. Uh, Hakeem Jeffries, Democrat, got 212 votes. Another 22 Republicans voted for other candidates not nominated by either party. It has now been more than two weeks without a speaker, and uh, some Jordan opponents have already called for Republicans to consider a new candidate. There are Republicans saying Jordan's done. He failed the first vote. He failed the second vote by an even greater margin. And that's it. There, it's just it's over. There, there's no more for Jordan. Jordan claims he's going to keep fighting. These sorts of statements from politicians in the middle of these circumstances typically mean very little. But there are a couple of major, major themes here that I think are important to address. Number one, this builds on the earlier segment and the contrast between what is happening on the Democratic side and on the Republican side. On the Democratic side, Joe Biden just completed an extraordinarily successful short trip to the Middle East, securing funding for Palestinians, securing the passage of aid through Egypt into Gaza. Uh, working on a package that will include funding to Ukraine, Israel and for the border, really making Republicans put their money where their mouths are, even if sometimes it's hard to know exactly where it is that their mouths are. Uh, sometimes they could be confused for other orifices based on what's coming out um, on the Democratic side in the House. You have Democrats united behind an excellent, qualified, superb choice for Speaker Hakeem Jeffries, who has been a guest on this program. Brilliant guy. Uh, has his what would we say his head screwed on straight, which is a major contrast to the Republican Party. And then on the Republican side, you have, as I mentioned, Trump, their presumptive Republican presidential nominee facing four criminal trials, making a fool out of himself daily, getting gagged by judges on and on. Republicans who, although they have a majority in the House, removed their own speaker due to disunity uh, in the House are unable to coalesce behind a new speaker and are accomplishing nothing and are doing nothing for the American people. The contrast couldn't be more clear. And that's story number one. Story number two is, again, as I mentioned, as we've been following these votes earlier in the week, the diminished importance and strength of a Trump endorsement. Trump very strongly endorsing Jim Jordan on Monday and Jim Jordan immediately losing the vote for speaker on Tuesday. Trump maintaining his strong endorsement, as well as other Trumpists like Marjorie Trader Greene and others on Tuesday, and Jim, Jim Jordan losing that vote by an even greater margin on Wednesday. And so we also recognize the diminished power of the Trump endorsement at odds with the way that Republican voters are planning to vote in the primary based on the polls overwhelmingly still supporting Donald Trump. And then number three, just another reminder that these Republicans really don't care about governing and governing in a way that is useful and productive for the American people. I've been um, I, I know this keeps coming up, but I'm, I'm really in the thick, the thick and the wide and the long of the research for my forthcoming book. 
And one of the areas that I explore in the book is the path, not only starting with the civil rights era through Trumpism for how politics broke, but the abandonment of policy by the Republican Party in favor of contrived social issues, fear mongering, grievance politics, et cetera. And we are seeing it come to a head. I continue to go back to chapters I thought I was done with to flesh out the nature of this insanity based on what is almost in real time happening. And so we'll have a lot more to say about that. Will there be a speaker by the end of today, by the end of the week, by the end of next week? I don't really know. But one of the things that is becoming very clear is that the people that want Jim Jordan to be speaker, they claim to be about law and order. It doesn't seem like they actually are. Let me explain. Sometimes it can be tough to maintain an emotional connection with your significant other. You might work in different places at different times. There might be a kid in the way. It can be hard to find time for date nights, especially because kids demand so much attention, which is why I love our sponsor paired, which is the app for couples. The app will prompt you with a daily question or a game or a guided conversation, all designed by leading psychologists. And the point is to just have a deeper connection with your partner, boost intimacy, build a deeper knowledge of one another. My girlfriend and I will use the prompts on paired throughout the day to stay connected. For instance, we answered a prompt about what we remember most from the early days of the relationship. It really helps us learn new things and there can be funny moments as well. An independent study found that couples using paired saw 36 percent increase in the quality of their relationship and giving a paired subscription as a gift is also a really great idea. You can try it free for seven days and get 25 percent off a subscription. Go to paired.com slash Pacman. The link is in the description.